Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Lifestyle Academy, and I've got a special guest, and I don't know how to say her last name, but I'm going to try it. I think it's Jersh. It's, is it Anne Jersh? That's, that's bang on. Perfect. I did it. I got extra letters mm -hmm. in there, you know? That's how they do that. <laughs> no, you did it perfectly. Yes, and you've got an <laughs> accent, so I think you're on the other side of the pond. Yeah, I'm just outside. I'm a London girl, just outside London. But I grew up in yeah, London. I've been there. I did spend Have you? some time. Yes, I did. I when I was, I, I used to do a lot of work. Or I still do work in the events industry, which has come to a screeching halt. But <laughs> <laughs> I worked with the convention bureau here, and I did a membership drive, and I got a lot of members to come in, and I got an all expense paid trip for two to Amsterdam. So we went over there and went to Paris and Amsterdam and London. Enjoyed it. Did you have fun? I did. It's the Good. The, the old uh, went went to all the old bookstores. You know where they got those leather bound books and yeah, open. there's a lot of old bookstores. You, yes. you have the most amazing finds there. Amazing yes. finds. Yeah, it's great. So <laughs> Anne, uh, how long uh, how long have you lived there? Well, I've, I've lived. Um, I've li I grew up in London, but I've lived around London all my life, my whole life. Yeah, I've, I've always lived. I've, I haven't moved away up in London I'm just outside London I'm just on the edge near Windsor near the Queen that's the way to do it then you don't got the rat race of the city but you got access to it right that is exactly why I'm here that is you've summed it up I see you're intuitive I, I can am. jump on a train I can be in central London in half an hour or I can walk five minutes and I've got big fields I've got you know and I've got a big I've got a big couple, I've got Windsor up the road, good shop. So yeah, that, that's why I'm here. You've that's how I am here too. We got, uh, we're just west of the big city of Minneapolis, Minnesota here, kind of next yeah. to Canada. <laughs> I'm going to visit out that way. We, I keep seeing it on the movies and thinking I have to go there. It looks fabulous. It is. It's a little bit different. I mean, to the, to the west of us, we got the Dakotas and there's, they're, they're more flat land. And then yeah. Iowa's kind of flat land. Wisconsin's real similar. To Minnesota, but Minnesota's kind of unique. I like mm. it. <laughs> so you're married and got kids and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got grandchildren as well. But, you, got, uh, you got a whole herd. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got uh, two, two grandsons, granddaughter. They're fabulous. Of course, at the moment we're in the lockdown. We're doing this during the lockdown, so I can't actually go and see them, which is not nice. But um, yeah, that, that they're adorable. And luckily, they don't live too far from me. That, that's, I feel for people when their family's a long way away. Yeah. Do you do the Zoom stuff with them? Connect yeah. Them yeah. WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do chat. Yeah, we have to. We have actually met once where they sit quite a long way from me, but on the lawn. We've got a lawn at my work. So they bring their own drink and sit away from me. Yeah, yeah, see, this whole up. thing has really made people innovative. I've got a magician friend that he created a program. He calls it uh, like Turf and Tar, where he'll do a magic show on your front yard or in your driveway, and you just stay away, and he does a magic show, and he just drives over. And Now, that is cool. That is very cool. <laughs> yeah, that, that, you should stuff. film that and put that on YouTube, because <laughs> that is very, very cool. Yeah, huh? yeah, very, you, yeah we're finding new ways to do things. That, that is the way to go. So let's get a little bit into what you do, because I did a little research. I saw mm -hmm. some past life regression kind of stuff and some mm -hmm. intuitive. Some people used to call it psychic, and then people go, oh, psychics, they're weird. And then you used intuitive, and it's a little more acceptable, you know, because I'm, I'm a magician and a Gemini, so I go on both sides. I'm the skeptic <laughs> and the, and the good, mystic. Good. <laughs> I play both I think sides. I'm, I think I am as well in some ways because um, there is a lot of nonsense out there. There's a lot of woo-woo nonsense. And uh, the people who give me the hardest time are actually magicians. They're, they're, they're the biggest skeptics, funny enough. They always try that's, to catch me out. That that's because are. we can see behind the veil. We can see behind the curtain. We understand mm. there's something else going on. And, and Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know they give me a hard time sometimes. Yeah, I think we've changed the name a little bit because I work a lot uh, for companies these days. It's, it's interesting how in the last 20 years that field has changed so much, so much that, you know, people that run big corporations will openly now talk about their, their psychic or whatever, whereas that, that would never have admitted to talking to a psychic years ago. And that people talk about using their intuition and, and you look at any top business person, they will mention their intuition or say oh, that totally. was my gut feeling I knew it. 
So it's kind of the scene as a natural process. We talk about psychic. I do use the word psychic, but um, I tend to use intuitive more because then people start to think maybe it is a process, and I see it as a process. I, I spend a lot of time studying how it works. How, how does it actually work? How does it work for you? And how is your intuition different from mine? Because when we start understanding how it works, we can use it more often, be more accurate. And just, just being positive. aware, aware mm. and kind. Con- like my, my wife created this thing. She called it the synchronicity experience. Oh, and wow. what you'd do is you'd come up with an intention and then we'd walk around the city and you just keep your eye on certain things that match your intention. And we went into this little uh, coffee shop that had these greeting cards. And my wife likes Paris. She loves mm-hmm. coffee. She, is, she used to be a... a uh, teach at the University of Minnesota. So she really likes to learn and teach, and uh, she likes to. She's got a thing about Paris. So, right. so there's this greeting card, and I said, "Look, check that out." And she goes, "What?" I go, "Look at it. Look at that card. There's a picture of an owl with the the Eiffel Tower behind it, wearing a beret, <laughs> and uh, with a cup of coffee." And I'm going, "Look at it." She goes, "What? What? What?" So sometimes you need somebody that can see things to call them out to you. When I called yeah. out to her, yeah. there's Paris, there's your coffee, you're a teacher, that's the owl part, and the beret with the art and stuff. Yeah. That's you. <laughs> yeah, oh so did you take her? Did you take her to Paris then? I did, but not, that was a different trip, but we went to right. Spain and then- Ah, ah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. You do, you can have those, those um, synchronicities. I've had them happen that are so mind blowing that I think, I better not tell anyone, they'll never believe this. They will never believe that synchronicity. It can be absolutely incredible. The series of events, a whole series of events can just line up and just go, this is weird. <laughs> and, and someone like yourself can see it where other people can't. I, I call it like people say there's no such thing as a coincidence. I mm. say everything's a coincidence. It's yeah. two yeah. incidences happening at the same time. Yeah. And when they come, when they converge, that's the sweet spot right there. I usually see it as a, as a sign to go forward. Yeah. Like that, it's a, va- you know, a validation. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, that's your signpost. I wrote the ebook years ago called Universal Signpost. And to me, it's like a signpost to say, that's the way to go. There you go. Um, when there's none of them about and keep hesitating and no signs come up, maybe it's a sign to step back you know step back a little but i love i love coincidences they they give me my guidance or pivot mm. i, I kind of use the example like you're at home you see a lot of the same stuff when you're at home and then yeah. if you took a long drive a trip somewhere you'd start not seeing familiar stuff yeah and then when you turned around and came home when you're going home which is home mm. in the heart mm-hmm. you're getting closer you start seeing similar stuff again and it's coincidental that you're seeing this stuff because you're getting closer to home that is really <laughs> neat. I've not ever thought of it like that. That's really neat. That's my that. magic brain taking off on you. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a book, right? Or a few books, I think you've got. I've written five. My, my last one's just come out. And it's, um, uh, my previous ones were, were spiritual, but it's kind of grounded spirituality. I, I just find we have to be a bit more grounded these days. You can, you know, when people start talking about unicorns, they've lost me, you know, I just go, come on, get back to the, get back to the, let's get back to the real world. So, um, but my last book's a business stroke spiritual book. And so it takes a brave publisher to publish that because, you know, in publishing, your book has to go into a department, it has to go on a particular shelf. So where do you put it? I don't even know where it is because we haven't got any bookstores open at the moment. So I don't even know where they're going to put it. But it's about, what I started to notice was people coming to me saying, things I've always done in the workplace that always work for me no longer do. Or the way work is, is changing. And I started to investigate and I started to research. And indeed, things are changing dramatically. And okay, we've got the virus at the moment, but there's going to be a whole load of stuff that's going to happen in the future that will keep changing. It might be artificial intelligence. All manner of things can change the way we work, the way we operate. Whole industries will go. New ones will emerge. So we need a different strategy, a different set of tools. So I spent um, a long time looking into this. I spent the last five years researching, but also talking to people that always seem to make the jump at the right time, or they always seem to be ahead of the game. They seem to be able to anticipate the way way forward. 
uh, because things will have to change. Even that, that, just like what I do, I read tarot cards that uh, uh, take people into the future. If you think my grandmother was a fortune teller, she would read the tea leaves. And she'd sit at a table in, in London, I don't know, same where you are. In London, they'd say, I'll cross your palm with silver. So they'd give her a florin, you know, a, a coin, a silver coin to pay her. And she'd read the tea leaves. These days, we're on Zoom. We have credit card facilities, you know, and we can talk to anyone anywhere in the world. So it's all changing. The whole thing's changing. We teach online. It, everything's changing, and it's going to continue to. So I wrote the book because I could see people becoming seriously frightened about the constant change, their mm -hmm. industry declining. Industries you never thought would decline are declining and will continue. You never thought loads of shops, where we live, I, I, I presume it's the same in America, we've got whole high streets and half the shops are empty. I didn't yeah. think that would happen. Who'd have thought that would happen? Banks closing down. You can't go and pay money into your local bank. You've got to do it online. You know, the amount of things we've got changing and artificial intelligence is taking over not just the stupid, boring stuff. It's taking over the clever stuff. The, yeah. You can get a girl to answer the phone. She's not real. She can take in 30,000 words in 15 minutes and answer any question. We can't compete with that. We can't. So yeah. we're having to reinvent ourselves. That's why I wrote that last book. It was kind of, I've been on a mission with it and I really, really worked hard. I talked to some amazing people. I interviewed some amazing people because I wanted, I really put so much into it. So I wanted to get 10 best strategies possible to help people move forward confidently into the future and thrive, not just survive, thrive. We want to thrive. Well, and be that, would, that kind of thing will help someone to be able to read something like that because then they can kind of navigate themselves through it where this yeah. whole virus thing has forced people to be innovative. Yes. Whereas yes. maybe it'd be nice to have a little, little roadmap to figure it out because it's like our, our brains have this logical thing and they think that they're going to go from step one to step two to step three to step four. They yeah. think it's going to go that path. And yeah. I'm assuming you're like an entrepreneur, self-employed. You mm. know that it doesn't go the way you planned. Never. Always bizarre, weird Never. curves and those coincidences come into play and you just got to follow that serendipity. And I've got to yeah. say, you mentioned coincidences. The book came out the week of the uh, lockdown. I've been working on it five years. It came out the week of the lockdown. If that's not a sign, I don't know what is. You know, it's just like... Well, that's what I mean. Those coincidences, I, I hyphenated again, coincidence, two incidences happen at the same time. They're meant to be. Yeah. It's not just some kind of fluke thing. It's to yeah, yeah. be yeah. conscious of it. Uh, you familiar with Deepak Chopra? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I met him years ago. In, um, Some of five. his stuff. He, uh, there was, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. Yeah. Um, I was really into his book, The Seven Habits of Seven Laws of Spiritual Success. Yeah. And I thought, this is a really, really cool book. I really, really liked it. And he had another book that he came out with. Um, it was called The Spontaneous Fulfillment of Desire. I didn't know that, but I saw the book and I bought the book just because I liked the title of it. I didn't really... I wasn't real conscious that I was getting it because it was his. I just got it because the spontaneous fulfillment of desire. I bought that book. So then there was a tabloid. I was looking at this, uh, all these different events happening in the city. And I saw, oh, here's uh, a rabbi and Deepak Chopra. They're going to be at this church. And I thought, free? You mean Deepak Chopra's coming to speak and he's free? No, wow. that must be a misprint or something because it was a real tacky looking ad. I thought somebody screwed it up. So I went to the event and it was Deepak Chopra. He was there and it was his book release for that book. Wow. <laughs> wow. So that was a coincidental <laughs> thing that just happened because I needed that, that, that book for some reason. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. I love, yeah, love it's that. It's fun. It's fun following the path of serendipity and coincidence. Yes. <laughs> so love that's love kind that. of what you do and you're bringing it into more the, the corporate world that used to be very skeptical, we would never bring someone like that into our space. When the reality is CEOs, that's how they operate on their intuition. They don't, there's no book. If there was a book, you just give it to someone else. They follow the book and they make their the recipe yeah. and poof, you got a successful business. That's not the way it works. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But uh, they, uh, there's been a number of studies and they found that people at the top 
um, use their intuition. People lower down, sit there studying data, 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 reams and reams of data, facts and figures. And the people at the top go straight to their intuition. But the latest research, the very latest, is really pointed to we need a combination of both. Having some knowledge and using your intuition. You know, sure. have a quick scan of something, then what jumps out? And I find that that's how I read tarot cards. I don't sit there and say, that card means that, that one means that when it's next to that. I just go, what's jumping out at me? What? So you could be talking to me about 10 different things. One of them I'll go, whoa, what did you say there? I want to hear about it. You know, so it's kind of using some information and intuition is the strongest way. But I'll just tell you, I think you're like, this is about just over 20 years ago. I used to have this CEO who used to come to me every Friday. He's having a really tough time. And he used to come, come and I'd guide him through. His wife was dying. He had children. He was running a major car company. It really had a lot to deal with. He had family being difficult. So he was really at the end of his tether. And he'd come and have a cup of tea and a chat. And I'd, I'd use my intuition. He used to tell his secretary he was seeing his shrink. He'd rather people thought he was seeing a psychiatrist than an intuitive. <laughs> do you know, it's so funny. And do you know, I called it the shift. The shift was about 17 years ago when I started to be invited to say a dinner party. And it's a big name and they're just saying Ansmar Psychic. And it's just like all of a sudden everybody's open about it. It was just about 17 years ago I noticed that change when people would be open about using it became acceptable yeah and it takes some time for that kind of thing to be acceptable you know yeah like, sure like the magic thing some people don't go for that because they think it's the occult and you know performing magic it's really they, they say that a magician is nothing more than an actor playing the part of his magi of a magician Oh, they're not really magicians, they're just playing a part because there's a trick behind it. But the other side of it, I do believe in the possibility of, the, of manifesting things, you know, strange ways. And there is a way to do all that stuff. You put the right uh, elements in place and you mm. end up having a result. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm the best customer for magic, by the way, because I can never work out how people do it. They totally, even when they're bad at it, I still can't work out how to do it. So... <laughs> <laughs> Very easy to, to do a magic trick on. <laughs> well, you've got some good ones over there on the other side of the pond. <laughs> it's, it's quite popular over here. Yeah, a lot of the guys in hypnotherapy are also into, into doing magic. Yeah, it's, it is When we popular. were over there walking the stores and stuff, we'd ask for magic books because we we're looking for mm. old magic books. And we had to clarify that we were talking about like Paul Daniels. Yes, magician. yes, yes. Yeah, because they would yeah. think right away, we're thinking of the occult magic. They're going to say, oh, the books are back there by spirituality. No, no, no. We, need, we want the Paul Daniels type magic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got your books. Are they available on Amazon? Yeah, they're on Amazon. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. They should be in the bookstores when they open. But yeah, they're on Amazon. And well, I'm I will put them, uh, them links on the what i do with these videos is i record them and i put an intro and outro and beam them up to the universe and then i'll mm -hmm. embed those on a blog and i will share that that link with you and then we can propagate that out to the universe and see what happens thank you so much that's very kind of you and, and how do we get a hold of you if someone wants to say i want to learn more about what she's doing well uh, you could go to anjosh.com i think you'll probably have a link or my name up somewhere anjosh.com or i'm on facebook or you google me i'm not shy i pop up a lot so um and say hello because i love talking to people i love hearing from people um uh, re really 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 um uh, and i'm I kind of really got this urge to come to america so you, what happens is you know it's, they call it the brit invasion a lot of my friends have moved out and yeah really 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 want to come out really i want to come to where you are because we ha don't have space here and whenever we see where you are on television there's always amazing spaces and it's just like oh god that'd be good to go there really well, people want out. what they don't have that's just the way it kind of works you know <laughs> <laughs> see something different <laughs> i do i do want to cut i definitely want to definitely want to head out where you are it's just uh, well uh, i connected with you out. on uh, facebook and linkedin i think and twitter and Whatever, whatever yeah. I saw on your website, I've done that. So I will, uh, again, I don't like doing too long because people got that valuable time. You know, there's only 24 hours in a day. So I uh, yes, absolutely. keep this a short and maybe down the road we can do it again. So I will. Uh, I would love to. Anytime. Perfect. Absolutely anytime. Love your okay. show. And I appreciate energy. you taking the time to be on Synergy Cafe. We will talk again soon.
Thanks. We will. Take care. Bye.